welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Lorena Aguirre and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. We do a lot of fun things here on my channel, so definitely make sure to subscribe, especially if you're a beginner nail tech. We give you all the details to how to make the nails last and everything else like that. So with this client, you guys might have seen that she was grown out a good amount. She did actually end up going a month with her nails and look how glossy they are. I know right here in this clip you can't really tell, but just because in this clip, honestly, I was just trying to remove the bulk because it was just some time that how. I don't know, it was just some time that it's been since we have done her nails. So, and she wanted to do, like, just basically recreate the set. So we did end up doing a backfill, and we ended up filing a majority of that clear acrylic down. Because the last time she did come, we did do a full set. But we didn't have to do, um, how do I say, like, we... I didn't need to do a colored acrylic because at the time I did not have the colored acrylic that she wanted. So basically I just ended up um, going in on her nails and just putting clear and then putting a gel polish over it because that was what I had that matched exactly what she wanted. And then right here you guys could see she did have a little bit of lifting so I went ahead and removed that. And then the ones that have the gold foils in them that are all over the whole entire nail, I am just going to go ahead and file it all the way down as thin as I could get it to get that gold foil out. If I don't get all of the gold foil out, it's not really a big deal because behind the glitter and the snowflakes and things like that, you won't be able to really even see that. But so if there's a very small bit of it left behind, that is completely fine. But if it's a big chunk like how you see it now, you guys need to remove it down if you guys are trying to achieve this look that we are doing. So she did bring in a couple of different pictures. Some of them had French tips, some of them did it. They had sweater nails and things like that. So that is basically what we are going to be doing today. And then on this one, again, it did have very, very minimal lifting and I'm just gonna kinda go in with the tip of my drill bit and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that as I am filing down the bulk of the nail. Alright you guys, my camera did end up dying, so I did have to wait a little while and work on her other end, but now we are going to be pushing her cuticles back and getting ready for prep. And you guys could see the nails on her other fingers, except the thumb, I did end up filing down a lot just so then I could get rid of a lot of that bulk and put the color over it that I was looking to put. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a fine sanding band and I'm going to be removing the shine. And pushing the cuticles back when doing the set, it's really important just because it kind of gets all of that cuticle out of the way, it's less likely that you're going to end up snagging it and things like that. So having it up and out of the way, honestly, it makes a cleaner application and it just allows you to, for your application to be a lot cleaner too. Some clients, I feel like their cuticles, they tend to go down a lot. So you might see me in some videos push their go back and push their cuticles back again. Some clients, I do feel like I end up having to do it a third time, but it just really depends on the client and how their how, how their cuticles are. But I really like them up and out of my way. And then with this bit, I am just making sure that if there is any lifting that I did see just to remove that just because I don't want it to cause a problem at all so and then now I'm gonna go ahead and get this super super tiny bit this is great if you guys have clients that it's really hard to get in the cuticles and hard to reach areas because their cuticles overlap their nail a lot um, this I feel like is a really really good bit I love it this is basically what made my clients nails stop lifting entirely like I used to have problems with some of my clients lifting a good amount but after using this bit I noticed such a big difference now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my cuticle nippers 
and usually those clients that they are their cuticles are a little bit more stubborn and they come to come back down on the nail usually this is the part where I will end up pushing back and then cutting the cuticles so I make sure I get all of them now I'm gonna go ahead and dehydrate uh, the dehydrator I am using is bond aid from OPI and I like to do two coats of that all right now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with young nails protein bond I do really want to try Valentino's I've heard a lot of great things about it and you get a lot bigger of a size for your money so I do feel like I do want to try their dehydrator and their primer because all the great things that I've heard about it and then again with that one I don't know if I mentioned it but I like to do two coats of that and then I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves. If you guys are allergic to acrylic and it's really hard for you to find a glove that works for you, I definitely recommend trying a nitrile glove and making sure that they are above a 9 milliliter just because I do find that those are actually what keeps the product out and away from my skin. There's some small chances of them going through your gloves. But a majority of the time, honestly, I feel like I'm actually okay. These are a thicker glove. They end up going up to, I believe, 12. Anything thicker than a 12 milliliter glove, it does feel like a kitchen glove. Um, just kind of warning you now. But I have used 12 milliliter gloves, and honestly, they work like a dream. I love using those for when I'm doing removals and things like that. But as far as what we are doing right now, I do have Montage's Milk White. This stuff is bomb. And you guys already know I have a discount code for you guys. So make sure to check out the description down below if you guys are looking for an easy application Milk White. And then I am using the Kiara Sky brush. You guys already know I've been using this for a little bit now. I think it's been like or no, I think it's been two to three weeks that I have been using it. And honestly, you guys, I love this brush. I'm so happy that I got it. I wish I would have gotten it sooner. But yeah, so. But now what I am doing is just laying the acrylic over her clear acrylic that she had before. And making sure I keep the, the shape nice and neat. The monomer that I am using is also from Montage. You guys know that this one has been my favorite for a while. And then I'm going to get that Desert Rose. And it Desert Rose is what she had on her French tip from the set prior. And on those nails, we are going to be doing a French tip. So there's really no need to make sure the smile line's all clean. And even if this Desert Rose blends over onto that clear acrylic that you see there, it's really no big deal. And then right here, we are going to be doing a glitter nail. And so I'm going to be getting a glitter from Montage. This one, it did come in with their spring collection. So I don't, a lot of their glitters, they don't have names. But if you guys were to go in store, you guys will be able to see it. But I am just dabbing it anywhere that I feel like it could, anywhere that it could use it. And then with this nail, it it is going to be kind of like replicated from my last set where I did like that glacier looking nail and you guys will end up seeing how I achieve that look but it looks so pretty. When my paper towel it does get dirty with a lot of acrylic and things like that or the monomer I do like to fold it over just because I feel like it allows a clean surface to wipe my brush and I feel like that's really really important when you are working with a lot of different products just because I feel like then that glitter that I am using, chances are of it getting into my brush and back onto another nail that doesn't have glitter on it, I feel like is less likely. And then I am using the sides of my brush to make sure that the sides of this nail is nice and clean and so I don't end up having to go in with a ton of shaping. But now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more glitter just because I want it to give it more of a layered look. I feel like sometimes when you're doing encapsulated acrylic, it's kind of nice having a gl an actual glittered acrylic. Um, or layering it like I am doing just because it makes your life so much easier as a nail tech. And then you have, I don't know, just different things that you're able to do. And it's also nice for your clients to just... Um, have the layer in it just because I feel like it looks a lot better. I feel like having 
layered glitter it looks a lot better than if you were just to do a solid glitter and then end up capping it I don't know what it is but I just feel like the layers just add so much more to it and then I'm gonna go ahead and go in with milk white again but before I go in and milk white I am really making sure I clean out my brush so I don't end up getting that glitter in my monomer because usually a lot of times it's like getting the glitter in the monomer and it floating around in there it's so much harder to get rid of it than than you think so definitely recommend that I've seen people where they actually put cotton inside their monomer which that allows them to be able or like the glitter it clings a lot more to the cotton than it would on the brush and I think that's a great idea I uh, I have yet to try that the reason being is just because I feel like a lot of times when you're working with nails cotton and nails they just don't mix I just don't like the fibers on it but I mean if you tried it let me know or if you guys work with a lot of glitters maybe just try it out and see if it works for you but so far I have yet to try it now I'm going to go ahead and go in with that desert rose again on that thumb making sure to get as close as I can and then blending it down All right, you guys, and see, you guys can see, I'm showing you guys the labels, so I did not forget the ones that we did end up using. And the clear acrylic also was from Montage as well. The Honestly, you guys, the, the clear acrylic from Montage is a bomb. If you guys are looking for a super, super crystal clear acrylic, I highly recommend this one. I do feel like it's more clearer when you're doing it on a, a full set than... If you are doing a fill and things like that because I do feel like on here you guys might not feel like it's super super clear but I promise you if you guys are doing a brand new full set this stuff is clear but um, yeah so I did end up having to file and then even from underneath I ended up having to file a little bit too but all right and then the sand or the sandpaper the <laughs> the nail file we are using it is an 80 80 grids I did end up getting these from Nailies in Rosemead in store or on Amazon or anything like that. These are actually very hard to find. I found smaller ones at Montage and that is basically where I did end up getting them but um, I did find them a little bit more affordable at Nailies in Rosemead so that's kind of why I've been getting it there but the only thing is instead of these actually being 80-80 grits I think these are 80-100 grit so one side is more coarse than the other side so I do feel like it did slow me down a little bit just because I felt like whenever I would go back to the 100 grit I was like what the heck why isn't it filing right and then I would end up having to flip it over so it happened a couple times to me so honestly if you guys like working with different sided files then kudos to you but honestly with me I feel like when I am filing I like to work with the same grit on each side just because I hate that happening where it's like I don't really even know which side is which so I mean I feel like it's great that montage they do have the 8080 and then this one is 8100 but yeah that's the only downfall but it was more affordable I believe these were $20 for a pack and Nail or Nailies had them twenty dollars for a pack, and then Montage has them for thirty five. But I mean, I feel like the eighty eighty grit really makes such a big difference. So I wish they did have them like a cheaper one of them, just so then I could save my money. Just because Nailies they do have a lot more affordable nail files there at their place I did end up getting a white one honestly you guys I don't recommend super cheaping out on your files just because I feel like the grit falls from them really really fast so I did end up getting one brand or one file from Nailies and it was an 8080 grit but the file would actually just like the pieces of sand or whatever on there that's like supposed to file the nails it ended up just falling off anytime I would use it to like go on the nails before I knew it like the the file was dull so then I would end up having to go in and get another file to file their nails so I would end up actually using two for a service so 
that wasn't working for me and to score the edges and do all of that all over again was just not it so I'd rather spend a little bit more money making sure that my files are actually working for me instead of working against me so hence why I know some people are like you don't need to spend that much money on a file but I feel like anytime I cheaped out on files I never was happy Okay, so now I did end up going in with a sponge buffer and I buffed out all of the nails. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and dust it off. I like to use one of those dust brushes that you had seen, those plastic brushes. And I feel like that really helps making sure that um, I get all of that dust out of the cuticle just because I hate to see this when I am taking my pictures and things like that is dust ended up getting stuck in the cuticle because I ended up top coating and there was still dust there so definitely recommend a scrub brush like that but now the matte top coat that I am using it is from Nail Addicts. Nail Addicts is their top coat honestly for matte is so bomb definitely recommend checking their matte top coat out I love it and I did end up trying out one of their gels and I did feel like I didn't get as allergic to it as some of the other gels that I do use. Colorland gels I am unable to use on my skin or I can get away with using it but I do end up having an allergic reaction which was worse than the Nail Addicts one. So if you guys are having nail allergies maybe try to buy one from Nail Addicts and see if that works for you. But so now I'm going to go ahead and have her put in the light. I put her in the light for 90 seconds just because I did end up putting that light on the thumb. I do feel like with the thumb, you really, really, really want to make sure that it cures all the way. So even when they put them in the light, I like to angle the light. And you guys could see it's not just straight. I angle it so then she could actually have that thumb getting hit by the light. And I also mentioned to them, make sure that thumb is getting the light. Because if your thumb isn't getting the light, or half of it is and half of it isn't, chances are, are is that they are going to end up wrinkling and you don't want that so even something that I mentioned to my clients like especially if it's colored gel don't have it in for a little while and then take it out leave it in there the whole time just because if you don't chances are the gel it will end up shriveling and then now for this area right here we are going to be doing a sweater nail so I'm just going to go ahead and follow the design that she had right there she said I could freestyle a little bit so I did end up making each sweater nail a little bit different but it's this one right here I am going in with the S pattern but whether you are working with a white nail or a black nail or a green nail you guys are able to get away with using the clear acrylic on any of those colors so basically what I end up doing is putting the white polish down or the green polish down or whatever color that I choose to use I put that down first and then I pour the clear acrylic over tops of any of the ones that I am using whether it be black white green orange whatever but this is what I find that it ends up working for me so honestly you guys try this method out let me know what you guys think and if it ends up working for you but now I'm just going to go ahead and add little details. What I am using is dotting tools and liner brushes. If you guys are having a hard time getting a steady line, I recommend using a longer brush. I feel like that actually helps me quite a bit just because I feel like sometimes with using shorter brushes and trying to do a nice clean line, chances are you're not going to get as, as clean of a line because when you are using a... A longer liner brush what ends up happening is if there is any movement in there the brush actually since it's so long it keeps the movement or it keeps the brush down and then you're able like if you end up bouncing a little bit it's not going to mess up your art so honestly I recommend getting a longer liner brush you guys they work tremendously I know sometimes it's a, a big investment trying to find brushes that you like but I highly recommend investing in some good ones because they will last you as long as you take care of them and don't use them for resin. <laughs> but now I'm going to go ahead and just do my art on this hand as well and dotting where I feel like I need it. And then on this one we did, we ended up doing lines in between.
and then now I'm just going to go ahead and go in and do an S pattern on this one as well. And then I'm going to just end up putting slanted lines on the sides of each of these. And I feel like it came out super, super cute and she was super happy with it as well. So, of course, when they're happy, I'm happy too. Sorry if you guys, it's focusing in on my wrist and my glove a lot. But I did want to leave this in there just so you guys could see the tools that I am using and things like that. And then even going in with the clear acrylic. And I like to keep on scooping the acrylic over and over and over and over um, I know it seems like a lot, but I promise you guys it's so easy to do. But you just really want to make sure that gel ends up absorbing as much of that acrylic as it can. And then I am going to go ahead and put a clear acrylic. I mean, <laughs> clear acrylic. Sorry, you guys. I am so tired. I just ended up finishing work at 8.30 p.m. tonight. And I've been working ever since 9 o'clock this morning. So I almost pulled like a 12 hour shift and I am tired okay you guys now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my French tip I like to go in as high up on the sides as I feel like the French tip would need and then I am gonna go in and I want to mention that I did end up putting a matte top coat down so I could do my art I had learned this from another nail tech and I feel like this tip has been something that has been helping me so 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 much so honestly, you guys, please try this out just because if you guys are struggling and you guys are putting your designs or French tip over glossy nails or anything like that or even just acrylic, I don't know what it is, but painting over a matte top coat rather than painting over like just gloss or acrylic, I feel like it comes out so much smoother and so much more seamless. All right, and then we did end up deciding we wanted to go in with some glitter, and I changed my mind. Usually with glitter, I do not like to apply it with a cuticle pusher. What I like to do is get this brush right here, dip it in, and when you dip in a brush like this, it grabs so much more glitter, so it makes application actually a lot faster. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in with my liner brush again. And it is not necessary to bring the line all the way down, but in my head at the moment it was. So that's basically just what we're going to be doing. I don't know why, but I feel like that actually helps with my visual and things like that. And now we're going to go ahead and make that line. And you guys can see how steady and clean that line looks when we are using a longer brush. And then now I'm going to go ahead and get my white from Tracy's Nails. You guys, try her white and black. I promise you guys, after you guys try the white and black, you guys are going to be hooked. I love it. The black, definitely make sure you are making sure that their thumbs are pointing at the light just because you might experience a little bit of wrinkling with it. But that is only if you don't end up having it face the light or their, your clients put their hand into the light incorrectly. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put a glitter on top of this. And this, again, this was from Montage's collection. It was their springtime collection. So if you guys haven't already got that, I don't know if they still have it on their site. But I recommend checking it out because it comes with a glitter and it comes with um, three or four different acrylics. Or no, I think it comes with six altogether. <laughs> Okay, so it ends up coming with six. One is a confetti acrylic. The other ones are all glow in the dark. So if you guys ended up seeing, I think it was a summertime or, or springtime. So forgive me if I'm wrong. But yeah, the honestly, you guys, I feel like I love it. I love it. And then even those acrylics are really cool because they all end up glowing in the dark. And they glow really really bright so if you put them up to a bright light once you take them away and put them in the dark you guys will be able to see how beautiful they glow you i do have them on my stories of my retention because one of my clients she did end up getting it and i did want to show be how how much they glowed because i wasn't able to get it in the video for you guys so i put it on there but if there is anything that i am missing on my videos and things like that definitely make sure to check out my 
definitely make sure to check out my Instagram just because I do have a lot of things on there as well. And then I went ahead and did my little dots and things like that. I came across this method on TikTok or Instagram Reels where when she made her snowflake, she ended up doing dots first and then working her way out from the center and then just going straight through with a straight line. I feel like this, you guys, the look of it looks so elegant and so pretty. So this is my new favorite way of doing snowflakes. I wish I knew the no artist who had did this because I feel like there's so many people that were inspired by her. And I forgot her name. I wish I would have saved the video for you guys so you guys could check out the video too. And then I am going to go ahead and put clear acrylic on that. And then I'm going to put matte top coat on the thumbs just because I wanted to map that out and still have some shine and gloss on the other ones. All right, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and put those dots and do the snowflakes on this hand as well. And the dotting tools that I am using, you guys could get these off of Amazon. They have multicolored packs as well, not, these, not just these plain ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with that same liner brush that I used for the French tip and then just go out from the center. Never go in to the center just because it does not end up looking right. But you guys, this is the finished look. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye.